like this question a lot because it helps us learn some very fundamental things about how to approach data sufficiency question. It tells us what we should not do in the way we think about questions or information given in the question. Classify the question as a GMAT 600 to 650 level question, not tough at all conceptually, but we need to be very watchful about not making any unwanted assumptions while solving questions, right. Get started with the question. Set S contains the following elements, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23. This stage what quickly crops up in our mind? 4, 4, 4, 4. Hey, this is in an arithmetic progression is what comes to our mind. What if x is a 29? What if x is a minus 100? What if x is a 79? Then suddenly all of these terms no longer will be in an arithmetic progression. So up until this point, we know they are in an AP. But without knowing what x is, let us not frame ideas into our mind saying that because these five numbers are in an AP, the sixth number that is written there should also be in an AP, definitely not necessary. So such unwanted assumptions are what we should stay away from. If we make such assumptions, we might actually be led into the wrong trail and therefore an incorrect answer. Let us look at what we have to find out. What is the value of x is what the question is, right. Quickly look at the question, what is the value of x? So the answer should be x is equal to 91, x is equal to 27. We need to come up with a number as the answer. The answer to the question is a number, the data is sufficient when we have a unique value. Right. Ground rules established, we also know what we should be watchful of. Take a look at statement 1 and again see whether this would suffice. The elements are in arithmetic progression, right. I said do not assume them to be in arithmetic progression. The statement is telling us it is in an arithmetic progression, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23. So the first thing that comes to our mind is if it is in an arithmetic progression, 4 is a common difference, x should be equal to 27. So statement 1 is sufficient. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did someone say that x is a number after 23 and this arithmetic progression is necessarily written in ascending order? No one mentioned that. If these terms are all in an arithmetic progression, x could be the term that is here after 23, x could very well be the term which is before 7. In that case, x could very well be equal to a 3. So x could be a 3 or x could be a 27. In both cases, we will find the elements in this set being in an arithmetic progression. Because 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23 is in an AP, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23 and 27 is also in an AP. So the first assumption is at the question stem, I did not want us to assume that it is in an AP. When the statement mentioned it is in an AP, we will say, yeah, we should not have thought it is an AP, but the statement is mentioning it is an AP. So obviously, x is equal to 27 is an assumption I do not want us to make. x being a 27 will also make this set to be in an AP. x being a 3 will also. So look at these possibilities. So statement 1 has not given us a unique value for x. Two possible values of x exist based on information in statement 1. One alone, therefore, is not sufficient rule out answer options A and D. Let us see whether statement 2 alone will help us evaluate it. This x is prime, infinite possibilities. x could be a 41, x could be a 29, x could be a 3. There are multiple possibilities, infinite possibilities. Statement 2 alone not being sufficient is so much easier to essentially come up with as a, as a conclusion. So eliminate answer option B as well. So A, D with statement 1 gone, B with statement 2 gone. We left with two more choices, C or E. Let us combine and see whether it makes sense. From statement 1, we have narrowed down x to be equal to a 3 or a 27. Only two possible values if these numbers should be in an AP. Statement 2 tells us that it is a prime number. So between 3 and 27, which is a prime number? We know that if it is a prime number and it should be one of these two numbers, then it obviously is a 3. Combining the two statements, you have been able to arrive at a unique value for x. So statements together are sufficient. Choice C is the correct answer to the question.